This is the best Yu-Gi-Oh format. This is the best Yu-Gi-Oh format. Ah! <laughs> yeah, we got skill, bitches. Did that intro make you hard? It made my nipples hard and it made my anus relaxed. So smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the whole gang. We got the Ultra Ball right here. We got the Ultra Banana up in my closet where he gets hard and aroused and he hopes that you'll hit that subscribe button. So, you know, a little friendly reminder, even if you don't want to, that's cool, that's cool. I'm just asking that you do because it'd make me a very happy panda bear. So anyways, let's go ahead and talk about a question that a lot of people have been asking me and that's Avery. Hey, Avery, 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 Avery. What's your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh format? What's the best Yu-Gi-Oh format in your mind? Now, for those of you who don't know, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for over 10 years at this point. I played casually with my friends and stuff growing up, being a kid, stuff like that. But I went to my first locals in 2008. And I remember it was about one week, yeah, one week before they changed the fusion deck to the extra deck. And ever since that time, you know, I've played through a lot of different formats. So I came in at around the time of Teledad when the Duel's Genesis came out. So basically when Duel's Genesis came out, the 5D Star Deck came out, use that for your point of reference. So I've played through Infernity. I've played through Dragon Rulers, all the Dragon Rulers. I've played through Hat. I've played through Pepe. You name it, I've played through it. You know, if, if it's not Diamond Dew Turbo, anything that or before or Airblade Turbo, if you want to call that, I, I've played in it all. And you know... Something that I still wish to this day that I wish that I could experience for what it was in real time was GOAT format. Now, this is kind of how I'm going to do this discussion is talk about multiple formats and come to the consensus of one that just rules them all. Now, GOAT format, as everybody knows at this point, is a fan favorite format, probably the most favorite format of all time for everybody, even though I've, I've heard people say, hey, I don't like the format, I just think it's too slow, and that's fine, to each their own. But Go format is so interesting because of the fact that it's so slow. Like someone commented on my Go format retrospective video and said Go format in of itself is chess for Yu-Gi-Oh, whereas modern Yu-Gi-Oh would be more like checkers because it's more fast. It's, you know, it's just more combo oriented. That's just how modern Yu-Gi-Oh has become. And in that regard, if you like slow, methodical, uh, not really a whole lot of technical play, sometimes technical play in Yu-Gi-Oh, you're going to like a format like that. But then there's people who only know the combo eras of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, basically 2013 and on, you know, uh, you you have all these combo decks, whether it's Dragon Rollers, Spiral, Sylvans, Pepe, um, Full Power Pepe, even post-adjusted list or Emergency Bandless Pepe, um, Sword Sold, uh, you know, just you, you name it. You name it. And it's, it's just modern Yu-Gi-Oh combo for the win. Build my board. And... That I, there is cool things in every format, but GOAT format really stands out because it is that one that is just most controlling and that it, many people find to be the most fun to play. A lot of people also like Dragon Ruler format in 2013, Teledad in 2008, 2009, whichever one you prefer to play in. Um, and of course, a lot of people like Edison format in 2010. Now, again, let to kind of separate the multiple bodies that we're talking about. If you like slow control based play, you're going to like GOAT format. If you like combo heavy formats, you're going to like basically anything 2013 and on. You just pick whichever best deck you want to play for that format's time period. Dragon Ruler, Spellbook, Spiral, what have you. And then you have the middleman, which is Edison format. Now, we're going to put Edison format to the side for a minute because I want to talk about my personal favorite. And my personal favorite is September 2009, specifically the deck that I played during that time, which was Burial Dad. Now, if you haven't seen it on the channel, I highly recommend that you go on my channel and type in the search bar Burial Dad because I posted it on the channel several times. But what Burial Dad was, was actually a deck that my dad came across in one of the world championship games that we were both playing at the time on our DS and that we would, you know, play online to play against opponents around the world and whatever. He came across this one that was super hard to beat and he ended up downloading it as a ghost to play like on a ghost data against the AI. And it was a Burial Dad deck where... It was called Burial Dad because you ran three barrel from the different dimension. You played Zombie Master, Goblin Zombie, Brionic, 
Dark Arm Dragon, but also three Necro Gardener with Mizuki and Plague Spreader. So the opponent tries to attack you with like a Gladiator Beast monster set they can return to the deck and get a summon. You just banish the Necro Gardener and negate the attack. Oh, you ran out of Necro Gardeners in a grave? I'm gonna go ahead and activate Barrel from the Never Dimension, put all three back and negate another three set of attacks. Or, hey, I had to banish my Plague Spreader because of its effect. I'm gonna activate Barrel from the Never Dimension, put it back in, top deck another card, summon it out, tribute for a Caius, or summon a Mizuki and make a Brionic. Like, it is such a fun deck, and I saw so much success with it, and I fell in love with it. And my dad ended up playing against me with it. He was, actually did kind of well with it when he was showing it off to me, and because I was flabbergasted, like, what the hell is this? And he teched in a Magic Cylinder, because, of course, he had to tech in a Burn card. So I ended up teching in a Magic Cylinder instead of playing, like, Dimensional Prison or Mirror Force, you know, any cards like that at the time. Um, and just killing people with magic cylinders sometimes like it it was a great time that is my favorite format of all time i will always love going to that format now what i think is the best format of all time out of all of the years i've played Yu-Gi-Oh, and now that i have more of a uh sophisticated mindset for Yu-Gi-Oh, and, and am a much better player than what i was back in the day playing infernity at full power and what have you and especially now since i've been playing through a lot of the old Yu-Gi-Oh ds games just you know to pass the time, nostalgia, and all that fun stuff. I've got to give it to Edison Format. And arguably, all of 2010. Now, let me set the stage before you get mad in the comments. You're like, oh no, this is the best format, blah, 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 blah. Because really, it's it's subjective. Everybody has their own format. Everybody has an opinion like everybody has an anus. That should be relaxed while you're liking the video and subbing. <laughs> um, so, allow me to explain. Edison Format was a time where... There wasn't a whole lot of competitive events. However, the top decks at the time weren't all that solidified because the format was so short before we got another balance and before we got events and things like that. But in all of 2010, I would argue not just the Edison portion, anyone could play any kind of deck for the most part and do well with it. You know, for example, you had Quick Draw Dandy Warrior, which is debatably the best deck of the format, which was good shit dot deck for the time. You had Quick Draw Synchron uh, with two copies of Dandelion. You could ditch Dandelion to summon out Quick Draw, get yourself two tokens, make a Drill Warrior, which at the time was ruled that it was a quick effect to banish it and that it didn't special summon back. It just came back like a wind-up rabbit. It just banishes. It doesn't special summon back. It just comes back to the field, has its full attack. You could ditch cards like Spore or Dandelion, Volcanic Shells. Since you could play three copies of Pot of Avarice at the time, you could use Shell, pay 500, add a copy to your hand, and then like recycle that same copy, pay another 500 to get another copy to your hand, or just get like three into the grave and then send back two Shells with off of an Avarice and then use 500 life points to add another Shell. Like it was just constant monster recursion. It was really busted for the time. But that was like your combo deck, right? But then if you wanted to play more control, you could play Gemini Heroes. You had three copies of Gemini Spark, which was busted at the time. You could summon a Neos Alias, use 1900 attack to hit over something, because you would also play stun cards like, you know, Thunder King Ryo, Elemental Hero the Shining was brand new at the time. It was really busted for its time. You could use Gemini Spark to get rid of the Neos Alias, pop a monster, draw a card, keep that advantage going. It played Skill Drain. So if you wanted to play like a stun control-based deck, then you had heroes. You also had other things during this time. Like I believe Malefics were coming out or were like about to come out during that time. That may have been more like 2011. Um, but regardless, you had all these different types of decks that you could play. You could play Gladiator Beasts. You could play decks that were fairly older. Light Swarns, like anything during this time. Zombies, like you name it. If it was out in 2010, you could play it. I don't think Infernities and X Sabers were out yet. I believe that those came in 2011. But 2010 specifically was like Quick Draw Dandy Warrior, Heroes, I believe Malefics, I could be wrong. Yes, you could even play Burn. <laughs> you could play like anything you wanted to. I think even Six Samurais got their new support during this time with Storm of Ragnarok, I believe was already out during this time. So I feel that Edison really did a good job at combining every single aspect of Yu-Gi-Oh and putting it together in one format that a lot of people to this day really enjoy just because of the litter of picks that you have in the format. You want to play control? You can play whatever kind of control deck you want. You want to play burn? You can play burn. I'm looking at you, Tavers Blissom. Um, you want to play combo, quick draw Danny Warrior. You want to play gladiator beasts or light swords. You can play gladiator beasts or light swords. You want to play monarchs even. Frog monarchs were a thing during this time. 
you could play Frog Monarchs. You didn't have Substitotes, you didn't have to worry about Frog FTK, but you could still play Frog Monarch with like Triple Swap Frog, a Rodent Toad, and a Treeborn Frog, and then you also had Soul Exchange. You could play in Frog Monarch a copy of the Winged Dragon of Ra or Obelisk the Tormentor just because it was so easy to get two monsters to the board, and then you Soul Exchange or just get out three monsters, like a Treeborn, a Rodent Toad, and like Special Summon a Swap Frog, then tribute all three for an Obelisk. Like, I can't tell you how many times I did that with Frog Monarch. I love Frog Monarch during that time. It was so much freaking fun. Um, I believe Super Ancient Deep Sea King Kaleocanth also came out during 2010, so you could also play Fish OTK. I could be wrong because I believe Fishboard Blaster was already banned by that time September 2010 came around. I could be wrong about that. Don't quote me on that. But the point that I'm trying to make is even whether those decks were out or not, whether they came out in 2011 or in 2010, you had these all these different kinds of decks that could easily compete against one another, and there was no clear best decks of the format. Like, you look at the format right now, and you say, okay, Branded and Sword Soul are the best decks. Like, those are the decks that you're trying to beat with whatever deck you're playing. Punk, uh, Adventure Theory on the deck, it's same thing, right? That You have the concrete top decks of the format, whereas in Edison, you don't have that. And you have so many different decks out in the playing field that you can play and do well with. So, Overall, the best format of all time when Yu-Gi-Oh! was at its peak, Edison format, in my mind. I, I really didn't like Dragon Ruler format. I really didn't like all those other formats. Uh, September 2009 is my personal favorite. Granted, that's got its problems because Frog FTK is a thing in that format. Um, but then just the golden age of Yu-Gi-Oh! is Edison format. You, you, you didn't just have combo where you were forced to play synchros. You could play a whole slew of different things that you wanted to and had a great time with it too. So guys, please let me know down in the comments. Do you like these long discussion videos? I mean, we're going on almost 12 minutes here, I think, unless in post-production I get it down lower. But guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.